Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to provide a short overview of the Smartsheet Pivot app, and some examples of when you'd want to use this over the core app functionality, as well as a few practical tips. Note the app is a premium app, so it does come at an additional cost unless you're on a Smartsheet Advanced plan, but there are clear benefits of when this will save you time, enable scalability, and remove dependency on key individuals being available or remembering to update dashboards and metric sheets when something changes. So let's dive in. In this scenario, I've got a sales team and here we've got a record of all the daily sales that the various team members are making. You want to view this in multiple ways, for example, on a dashboard or in a table format. So here you can see the, the various team members and what their totals are by product and by month, which is much easier to digest clearly than the the input table that you saw previously. So this, what I'm showing you here at the moment is an output from the Pivot app. So let's dive into the Pivot app. But before we do, one of the key benefits of the Pivot app is that it enables things to be updated and new team members and products to be added dynamically. So let's just have a look at that scenario here. So what I'm gonna do in this case is actually I'm gonna change this first item here and add someone else in. So I'm gonna add in demo productive and I'm also gonna add in a new product. So I'm gonna pick from the list and I'm gonna pick a different item which hasn't appeared as yet. So what I'm gonna do is I am saving that in terms of the team sales. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to run the Pivot app. And so to open up the Pivot app, I will go to the launcher, go down to Pivot which I have pre-selected. And this is opening in the background and connecting to the Pivot app. What you can see is the various Pivot sheets I already have created and I've already got this report created as well. So just to give you a bit of a sense of it, I'm gonna edit this sheet as well whilst I'm here because one of the things when I was looking at the sheet, if we just flip back is it has got the names because they're contacts is showing the email address. If you want the names to appear, which I think is more better you know, from the viewpoint on the dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that as well. So if we just go back to the app here, I'm going to take out rep an item and I'm going to add in the field and I'm going to put in name, which I've got as an additional column from using the contact field. And I'm going to add in the item again. You can see in here, so I've got the columns, that's where, that's what I've, here I've chosen month, and what I've got here is the sales, and it's summing the fields. I've given this a name, and here I've got the opportunity to say how often I want this to refresh. So every one, 12, day, or week, on that bit. I'm gonna click next, destination sheet. So this is already set up in this case. Um, so if I press that, it will open it. If I just move forwards, it's going to confirm and say this is what we want to do. So I'm now updating the app and it's going to change it from name to item. So that's now updated. Because it's due to run on a daily basis, I'm actually going to trigger it to run now. So I'm going to press this. It now opens up the sheet and it says, okay, confirm. This is what you want. You want. It's going to show me a preview. And you can see this is what's come through. So it's already added in the item. You'll notice the columns aren't in the same order that I have, and they've got nine, eight, seven, six. This is because I've got this set up from the dates. Month is working out the number of the month in the sheet. You'll also see that it's changed the names to be actual names rather than the email addresses. So I'm going to press create. This is now working in the background. It's updated, now press close. And if we go to the pivot output, I'm now going to refresh this and let's see what changes. So you'll see immediately that the names have changed from email addresses to the actual names. You'll see that the new product has been added dynamically, which isn't in any of the other items and the new person has been added and it's added to September. So a couple of other quick points to note here is I've also got conditional formatting working in the background. 
Once you set up your pivot table, it remembers the key setup that you've got in. But if you add if you add in columns, it will it will keep those. But new columns come in, for example, a new month. So here I've previously set it up so that I've got October, November, and December data. So it knows the, those will be populated in the future. We'll come into that in a moment. In order to get the, the names always showing, I've added the conditional formatting. In this case, I've actually got a little helper column here where I've got a little formula. So you can see the formula to tick, add a tick box to say that's the level. And the conditional formatting, it says if the level's checked, then make the whole row blue. That means therefore, anytime a new uh, item is, I guess, person is added to the list, they will show up and be formatted in the way we want. So I'm just going to hide that column again. So that's the first bit in terms of showing you how the pivot table works, changing that into names and the items. The other piece I'm going to show you and the other key tip on working with the pivot tables and the key reason is you can get data from multiple sources, which you can't do if you're using a single sheet and metrics tables. So what I mean by this is, in this case, I'm going to go to a scenario here where I've actually got sales reports coming in from the UK and from Iberia. These are combined into a report. Now, you can have data come from one source, and this also means that you can add filters to that, which you can't do if you're just using it from a sheet. So in this case, I've got a filter which takes away any data from the previous year. So it's great being able to have that filter on here. So in this case, I've got the sales report for Iberia um, and the UK combined. And what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to show you how this is pre-set up. So in this case, I've got January, February through to March, September. What we want to do is when October comes in, it's going to appear with a 10 and some text which will need correcting. So to preempt that, I'm going to make some changes to this. And in the data, what I'm just going to do here is to add in three rows at the top. And I'm going to add in dates of the 1st of October, 1st of November, and 1st of December. You can see my helper column here with the month. That's what's being used by the pivot table. I'm going to save this. And if I just go back to the sales report, I'm going to refresh this report and you should see these items come in. There they are. And currently the pivot table looks like this with the UK and Iberia. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my, uh, my pivot app. Just need to find it. Here we go. And team sales UK and Iberia combined. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to run this. So I'm going to click run region and name preview. And you can see it's added in October, November and December on this piece. So I'm going to press create. That's completed. So if I go back to the pivot output, in this case, I'm going to refresh the pivot output. And in this case, you can see it's added in the additional columns. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to be October. November. and December, okay. I'm going to move all of these to the far end. Put them in the correct order. And then I'm just gonna make sure all the columns are the right size. So this is now set up. Now clearly we don't have any data in this at the moment. So if I press save, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go back to the pivot table. Wrong. Before I do that, I'm just going to go back and I am going to take these items out from my data. So I've run it, so they're there already. I'm going to delete these rows. I'm going to save that. 
You'll see that in terms of the report. So if I refresh the report, those items will disappear. They're gone. So now if I go back to the pivot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that again. And you can see they've disappeared again. So I'm going to press create. is updated. So if we go back to the pivot output, changes have been made, let's refresh, and you can see the blank column is gone, January, February, March, and then October, November, December are showing as blank. So I hope that's been useful in terms of showing you how you can use the pivot app and various reasons why you'd want to use this as opposed to doing a more manual workaround, which works for a period of time, but when you're looking to scale your business, then you want the automation, and this is one of the key reasons why uh, we all use Smartsheets. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you want to be notified about more videos like this when they come, and uh, get in touch with me if you want to find out more. Again, this is Rich Coles at Productive Project Solutions. Thank you for watching.